is this for a drive This will now be recorded. The special permit is for a drive through facility servicing the building located nearest the corner of Timpany Boulevard and West Broadway. The applications and site plans are available for viewing on the City of Gardner Planning Board website. All persons interested in this matter who desire to offer testimony are invited to participate. This notice is also published on the Massachusetts Newspaper Publishers website, signed by the Gardner Planning Board. And for the information of all present, this meeting is being recorded for purposes of the minutes and is being simulcast on local cable access television. All right, we have a presenter ready. I would ask uh, that everybody who's not speaking, please mute your microphones. Again, please mute your microphones. You get a terrible digital echo otherwise. Thank you. Hey, um, Bill, I have given you the presenter. You should be all set now. I can't hear you. Anybody here, Bill? Nope. Negative. No. No. I know he has control of the board, but um, no, we still can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear us. Can the controller of the meeting unmute him? It I I can, but I think he's unmuted. I just sent him a message. Um pretty sure he's already unmuted. I'm gonna go in and check. Looks like he's unmuted. Is there anyone else from his staff on online? No. Okay. I'm gonna call. Yeah. Patience, folks, while we deal with these uh, technological difficulties.
Good background. I think he just typed a, a note saying I've tried calling in, but you can't hear me. I can see that he's not answering his cell phone, so I'm not sure. I think he just needs to change his computer audio because if you look in the presentations, it looks like he's on via phone. And yeah, he's going to try to get back in. I, I would. Um, I'm taking the presenter back. And to cancel. So, I think what he needs to do is just get out and then try to get back in. He's going to try another computer. All right. We will uh, give him a few minutes to do that. And if it doesn't work this time around, then we will uh, continue this, this hearing into uh, our May meeting and press on with regular business. But we'll give it a few minutes and uh, see what happens. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we have audio, Bill. Hey Bill, let me get you uh, on on the presenter. All right, apologize for that. Are you ready to go on? I am. Okay. You have the floor, right, so sir. I apologize. Please proceed. Um, I was calling in the phone number, and it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. I could hear everybody, but no one could hear me. And I tried unmuting everything, and it wasn't working. So I just switched computers. So uh, the site um, is at the intersection of West Broadway and Timpany, as everyone knows. The current location of the 99 uh, building, which is which has been constructed. This is an as-built of the site, so this is all the existing conditions that are on the site right now. Um, what we're proposing to do is to, now if I make this a little bit bigger, um, is to um, construct the Starbucks building. I'm sorry, we're gonna, this is gonna be referred to as the Gendit building. So this is a building um, that is similar in size um, to the original building, but formatted a little bit different. It, it, the original plan had a square building and didn't have any parking on the right side. All the parking was on the left side of the building. So we basically have taken the building footprint and shifted it to the west. And we've incorporated now a drive through lane um, to come around the building in this area here. Um, this is where the Starbucks would be um, situated. The rest of the space would be, would be general office retail uses um, for the property. Um, this is the building that has already been approved. We had a minor modification that was uh, recently approved uh, on this building with a reduction in the building footprint in the addition of five parking spots in this area here. Um, so the central 
site plan review information remains essentially unchanged aside from shifting pavement areas from one side of the building to the other, um, adding additional pavement in this area here. To accommodate that, the existing drainage system, which was constructed in this area here under, underneath the parking lot, was re reviewed and a new drainage analysis was, was submitted to show how we're picking up the drainage from the reconfigured parking areas as well as from the buildings. Um, they would also, in this building here, we've actually modified this as well to include a roof drain system on the back side um, to connect into the drainage system over here. Uh, the roof drain system from this main building would be coming into the drainage system in this location here. Um, this is really the main part of the review relative to the special permit with respect to the Starbucks project. Um, this the project was submitted uh, for both special permit and site plan review. Uh, the special permit requirements relative to the drive-through lane are outlined in the, in the letter that was submitted, the narrative, um, and talks about the various components of the requirements relative to both um, the section regarding drive-through lanes in the city as well as the special permit requirements of the, of the um, for the planning board to review and approve the, the uh, project. Um, in general, this would be the pickup window. This is where the orders would be picked up by the actual customers. They would be fed through in this location here. We have seven cars of queue uh, between the drop pickup window and the actual um, order board. The order board is located at the seventh car for Starbucks facilities because of the additional time it typically takes to uh, process an order for a Starbucks customer. Uh, behind that, um, the city has an, in their ordinance requirement that we have 10 vehicle cars availability within the drive through lane behind the order board. We've accomplished that uh, with 10 cars um, from car number seven um, to car number 16 right in here. So that basically is handled with respect to the number of vehicles you can have or you need to be able to soar on the site behind the drive through pick uh, order board. Um, the, the drive through also has an escape lane that goes all the way around the site and connects it into the parking lot, which is shown better. Um, and I'll zoom this in for you. This, this parking lot here is where if it was, if uh, someone was in the drive through and wanted to escape, they would be able to come out and come through the parking lot and be able to get out of the, of the area here. Um, by the time they get to this point, they've made the commitment because they've done the order. So now this section here is, is primarily for the pickup window right here. Um, on site, the center drive uh, stays as it was before. What we we're doing in this area is we're actually adding some stop signs and changing the, the striping. Um, the striping currently has a curved line right here. We're actually going to square that off. Um, this line right here is actually one of the new property lines, so that's not striping, but we're going to stop the striping here. Put a stop line and a stop sign in this location here. There's already one here at this point. We're going to add one at this location here and this location here. <laughs> make sure that someone doesn't shoot across to this parking lot or, or come out through here. If we have a four-way stop, that'll improve the safety um, on the site itself. As I stated earlier, the drainage, and I might have stated this when you couldn't hear me. So the drainage basically has been reconfigured um, to allow all the drainage to be utilized uh, within the existing um, drainage system, which is in, this, in the parking lot underneath here. Uh, we did make some modifications where some of the drainage was going to be coming um, um, into the system here. The, the grades and elevations, because this is so flat in the back, we had to have two catch basins to pick up. Uh, an area from about this high point here to about here, and then there's a, a high point and a high point here, which ends up creating a low point here. So we've got to add two um, catch basins in there, and we're basically connecting them to a new manhole here, which this ex drain line right here is existing. Okay, so the drainage system will accommodate um, the, the site as improved from a site cleaning perspective. Um, as well as the improvements being made to include the roof drain systems into the building. As part of the change, uh, there were some, some issues with the roof drains over on the existing 99. We're also including that um, construction to add that roof drain system into this back of this catch basin right in here. That was actually part of the modification approval for this building here. Some of the um, 
items that are in the narrative um, that we talk about um, is relative to the um, integration of the either part of the requirements under the 770D integrated the site with circulation pattern. We feel that this circulation pattern works very well with the site. Um, it doesn't interfere with the site, uh, the main site traffic and doesn't back out onto the street. Uh, one of the questions was, what's the distance between the property line and this driveway entrance right here? That's 48 feet. So that is in excess of the 40 feet required um, by the uh, ordinance. Um, the, the other item is to minimize conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles. And we feel the site plan does that. There's a, a very clear pedestrian path through the site. Um, these are all sidewalks that are be built with crosswalks. So you could literally walk from one end of the site to the other um, without interruption. Um, so that's, that's accomplishing that goal. We also have made it so that the drive through lane starts after this crosswalk area here. Um, so there shouldn't be any cars uh, parked in this area. Um, and there should, there's, there's actually quite a bit of stacking, a lot more than we would normally put because of the fact the city requires a 10 behind. Um, so we've, we've, we've provided the bypass lane. The, side, the, the location of the drive-through, if, if, the, if the building was facing West Broadway, the drive-through would need to be on the side in the rear of the building. The facade of the building is actually in this area here. So we've had the driveway um, along the side of the building and along the rear of the facade, but the drive-through is between the street and the, um, and the building itself. I just got to get one or two more of those. Um, I think we've worked well with the vehicular and pedestrian movements and loading and, and trash storage area not interfering with that. So the drive-through lane does not interfere with that. The trash um, receptacle is in this area here, so that doesn't conflict with the, the drive-through lanes at all. Um, and the storage, the unloading and unloading, uh, right now uh, there's a loading area down in, in this area for the 99. Um, typical loading would be that they would basically be bringing most of the product um, through the front door. Uh, very little of the product comes on, uh, on, on um, large trucks, except for when we're doing the, probably the initial fit up and the initial um, stocking of the, uh, of, the, of the site or the, of the um, use within the building itself. Um, the weekly deliveries of, of, of um, product probably would also be via a, uh, a larger uh, tractor trailer unit, which could park here temporarily and, and, and bring the food in through the front door. Um, that's how that's all working for that. Um, and it does not enter onto a public way. So those are the, the basic criteria that we've um, looked at with the, um, and these are right out of the ordinance. Um, there are other items within um, the ordinance that talk about, and these are some of the things that uh, I've, I've got some notes on. Um, so we, as I said, the, uh, the 40, 48 feet provided um, but there's a lot of information on signage, which I'll go over in a minute. There's also information regarding trash receptacle, receptacle, receptacles. Starbucks doesn't consider those uh, brand appropriate, but I know that those are required and I have a couple of spots that those could go as well. Um, so regarding signage, um, as shown on, get this out of the way. There's a series of signs that um, that, the, that Starbucks has as part of their um, main um, sign program. Um, much of it being directional. So there's a directional sign in this location here, which will have a, a, an arrow to the right saying drive through. Um, and that's really for obvious purposes there. They then have a preview board um, at car number nine is where they typically put, put that. And what that, what that looks like is, this would be the, pre, the preview board right here. So I, I think if you've been through uh, some of the newer restaurants, 
of late that fast food restaurants all have these preview boards where they can change whatever their specials are. Then new products usually get put on this board as well. Um, from there, um, they then have um, the main um, digital order board, board uh, which is a digital screen with a speaker unit, um, which talks back and forth. And that, um, that board looks like this. So it's literally a, a, a digital screen of, of, um, of, of somewhat some advertising and then some suggested selling. And then from there, when the order is taken, the order switches over to a, um, a menu board that they then can uh, work with. That order board is part of a large canopy system that pr provides a weather protection over the vehicle. Um, so that's a structure that uh, would be built as part of this. Um, and that's really to, to have a covering over the car area as well. It's, each site is different about whether they put these in or not, but I'm going to presume that they are since they sent me this information. And then the last type of board is the five panel menu board. This is showing a three panel menu, menu board and they do have a five panel version, which is what their preferred um, product is. Um, they have not sent me the information on this yet, but um, I, I put in a call um, to the to the um, broker to try to get this information uh, so that I'd be able to show it to, to the board. Uh, one of the things that comes up with respect to those items is the number of signs that the drive through is allowed, the size of those signs, and how that is all worked into the permitting. Um, I will say one other sign that's there is, a, is an exit sign saying thank you, um, and then there'd be a do not enter sign on the size on the other side. Um, and those are shown right here. So there's a, there's a drive through sign I was talking about before, the thank you exit sign, and the do not enter exit only sign that would be at the beginning and the end of the, um, of the drive through lanes. Okay. So what I'd like to be able to do is to give you square footages of these signs, but I don't have them at this point in time. Um, I spoke to Trevor about this earlier, um, and that's something that I'm trying to get. Um, I know that this 40 square feet is your maximum uh, within the ordinance. I'm thinking that this five panel board is probably more like 60 square feet, and that this is probably gonna, the, the, the pre-order board is probably gonna be somewhere between 20 and 24 square feet based upon what I'm looking at. And I'm, I believe that this would actually also count where it's a, a menu board and it's digital. I would believe, Trevor, if I'm not mistaken, that that would count as well towards the square footage. So you and I talked about the fact that I thought that they were two signs, but they're actually a three in the order process. Um, so I'd like to try to address that as well um, as part of this. Um, there, there is also a, a height limitation bar, um, which is typically put um, just prior to the vehicle, um, I'm sorry, prior to the pre-menu board. Um, in this case, we, we've had discussion with them about putting that bar out in this area here so that the car knows where it's, where, that it can't go in there, it's too high already before it even gets to this point here. Um, and that's one of their, they have distances they want each item but they're not accounting for the city's 10 vehicles behind um, the drive-through lane. So we, we have to get that cleared with them um, to put that in this area here. So I would prefer that to be up in this area here because I think it makes more sense. Any questions so far? Hopefully you can hear me. Loud and clear, Mr. Hannigan. Okay. Um, so some other questions that have come up with respect to the site. I'll go back to the previous plan. When the, the cars come around, when the cars are driving in this location here, um, obviously the intersection's right there. The concern relative to the headlights is, is, a, is a question that got brought up. Um, right now, this elevation in here is right about at 120. The elevation at the intersection right up in this area is about 124. So there's a four foot cut right in this area here. Um, and that's shown better probably on the grading plan. It's right in here. So this is elevation. Let 
proposed elevation of 120 and 120. And right now the elevation up in this area is 124. So this would be basically, um, this, the headlights would essentially uh, be directed right at the, at the embankment. So this seems like this is gonna be fine. When you turn the corner, um, the issue comes to um, the fact that you're driving along the drive-through lane and there's cars coming up the street um, eastbound on West Broadway. So the concern or the question that was asked was, what's the effect of the lights on this traffic? The first thing I'm gonna note is there's about a 35 to 40 foot offset between the, the travel lane um, in West Broadway and the drive-through lane. The second part is that the, at least at the entrance in this area here, which is where the, the cars start turning around this area here. So that's a, a pretty considerable distance from where the drive-through lanes um, are. In this area here, and I can go to the cab and cut, give you a distance. It's about 90 to 100 feet. There's about 115. So when you start looking at the offset that you'll be dealing with from a car coming down the road, it's not only the, the distance of, 100 and, of uh, 260 feet, you know, but as you get closer even, the, the offset of the, of the headlights becomes more um, favorable. In other words, it, it's, better that, it's, it's better that the car is here and the offset distance, because the lights are gonna be pointing more in this direction, um, versus this direction. So the further you get away, um, the more direct the headlights are, but also the less intense they're going to be because there's more distance. Um, so that's, you know, we get a car in this area here, they're not going to see the headlights because these headlights are actually, um, I'm sorry, they'll see the headlights, but they won't be shining in their eyes because the headlights will be, will be shining in this direction right in here. Okay. Um, that was a question that got asked earlier um, on, on our review. Um, another question that came up, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Rel <clears throat> relative to the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the menu boards. Um, that's something that I believe the board has the ability to um, allow within their permitting. And that's how we'd like to have this handled. Um, we've tried to show um, pictures and information of what the boards look like, um, just so that there can be some sort of sense of scale. Um, you know, this is what we're proposing uh, for both the order board and the overhead canopy. And these are what is provided as far, as far as the preview board is concerned. And this is kind of where they lay out where the different um, uh, signs should be, okay? So we're asking that the board take a look at the, um, the different elements that we're looking at in, in hopes that, that when we get the actual dimensions that they'll still be acceptable to the board. Uh, but I, like I said, I'm thinking that the, the five panel menu board is going to be bigger than 40 feet. Um, the, the preview board will be smaller than 40 feet. And I think that the, based upon the pictures and just trying to extrapolate information, I think that the menu board, the digital menu board is probably going to be about 40 square feet, but I, I just don't know. Um, the next item that we would be talking about would be relative, I guess I should, are there any other questions on the site plan or on the special permit part of the, um, of the project? I know that I believe Chris Coughlin has reviewed the site plans as well as the drainage. Um, the next part of the discussion can be relative to traffic, which I'll yield to Heather uh, Montague okay, on that review. I have a question. Yeah. This is Deborah Aspen. Yeah. Um, this is my property over here. I don't know if I have my one moment, pointer. One moment, please. The, uh, public on, portion on, on, on. the public portion of the hearing is not open yet. Please stand by and you will be given an opportunity to question the presenter. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you.
Any questions from the board or Chris? Okay, so what I'll, um, Heather, it, it might be, I don't know if you need any, any, any of this display information for your presentation. On the traffic. If you just leave the site plan up, I can present to this. All right. So can you hear me? If you if you just leave the site plan up, I can present using this. Heather, I can also make okay. you a presenter if you if you okay. have something to share. Yeah, if you give if you give Heather controls as well, I, that'd be perfect. But uh, yeah, that I can point to things. I don't have the final site plan, so I would need the one that's up on the screen now. Okay. Um, all right, so ready for track? <laughs> yes. All right, so good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Heather Monica with Greenman Peterson, and we are the tra traffic engineers for the proposal project. Um, as you know, this is the second time been in front of the board talking about this project. Uh, we previously did a traffic see, uh, did a response comments, did a sensitivity analysis for the previous approval of the ninety of the ninety-nine restaurant. Um, I apologize if I'm bringing up probably just my internet. Um, is this can can you hear me? Anyone shake their head? Yeah, I just gave you. Okay. Um, I gave you. Uh, so we did prepare a. a Okay, thank you very much. I see. Okay. So we prepared a supplemental traffic impact and access study for the project. It's dated March 17, 2020, and was uh, submitted to the city for review. Um, the last traffic study for the project looked at 6,000 square foot restaurant, 99 restaurant that is currently constructed and occupied, as well as at the time, we just looked at 19,600 square feet of retail space. Well, for this supplemental study, we have now looked at everything that you see in front of you. So you see a 6,000 square foot restaurant, approximately a 2,000 square foot fast food restaurant without drive through window, a 2,300 and 15,000 square feet foot coffee donut shop with a drive through window, a 3,000 um, square foot dispensary, a 1,350 square foot um, of general all space, and 10,600 square feet of retail space. Uh, so that's included in the traffic study that's before you, even though previous parts of the project have been approved. I just want to know that everyone wants to know that the traffic study encompasses the entire site, not just the Starbucks or anything like that. So uh, because we are now looking at Happy Donut Shop and some office space previously to what we looked at before, we wanted to look at the AM peak hour and make sure that we didn't have any problems then. So the study area intersection that we looked at includes the adjacent signalized intersections of Boulevard at West Broadway, as well as Tiffany Boulevard at Dyer Street and um, a little bit further south, Tiffany Boulevard at Dyer Street. Uh, we call it west. So this portion over here is east. Down there is west opposite Timpany Plaza. So that's our study area. Uh, like I said, we looked at PM and Saturday on our last traffic study. So we use those volumes and then we did new counts this year to uh, look at the AM peak hour. Again, because of the coffee don't shop in office space. We looked at collision, um, and that's all included in the traffic study. So for future conditions, we looked at 2024 previous traffic study, and um, the trip generation for those uses um, were at, as if this was, you know, just like it is here, one giant development. Um, so we, we can assume on a, on a device who's going to the office might also stop in at the Starbucks. So although one person coming to the office on the site, they're recognized. Yes. Is someone saying, Heather? Yeah, you're Hello? breaking up a lot. No. 
Okay, I'll continue. Um, so as I was saying, if one person comes in the site, they could possibly, uh, I apologize. I, I, Your audio is toast, Heather. I can do here. Does that mean when I turn my microphone or anything? Is is it breaking up for everyone or just Bill? Can I head shakes? Breaking yeah, up for everybody. Up. Everybody. Um. Okay. So, I guess it sound better. It's, it's breaking up for everybody. Okay. Um. Yeah, it sounds like a bandwidth I, thing, not not an audio to thing. Take my headphones and try to do it that way, but usually it will. Um, excuse me. I just sent Heather an email uh, to see if she can call in by phone to see if that'll help. Thank you. Yeah. Video off. Um, Hello, we can't hear you at all now. Um, I'm real bad that you can't understand me. That was the best right there. Yeah. <laughs> I just I am dirt. When I was just. Can you call back in by phone? I mean, I couldn't get in, but maybe you can. Um, I can give you the number if you need it. Would you like the number, Heather? I am her the number. She's still in the meeting. Amy, are you the one that texted her? Yeah, I sent her an email asking her if she could call in. I'll, I'll, I'll email her the number too. You have it? The one that you have on the screen right there? Um, I don't know, it's on the screen. I can't read the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have 646-749-3122. Uh, yep. An access code nine, okay. that's it, that's it, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. What she's trying to say is everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it, it really, she, no, she really is. I'm... She was trying to say a little more than that, though. Bill, do you have her cell number that you could text her also? She's calling right now. Oh, good. All right, I'm going to unmute me then. I'm calling. I'm calling in, but it is, um, I'm muted. Heather, was that you? Can you hear me through the phone? Yes. I, I think you're hearing me through my computer. You're going to have to mute your computer or you're going to have a um, terrible echo. I'm not sure how you're hearing me because I'm hearing myself through the phone and um, um, I guess through the computer. 
Heather, hop, try again. Now we can't hear you at all. Uh, I, I, well, I, I muted her, but I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Can you unmute her, Trevor? Yeah. Try now, Heather. Can you hear me right now? Can you hear me like this? Yes. If you yes, you can hear me. Is this sound better than the headphones? Yes. yes. You haven't broken up yet, okay. so let's try okay. take two. <laughs> let's try this then. I apologize. Should I start over or can I start at future conditions? I would start from the beginning because 95% of what you had to say was all broken up. Okay. I we got bits and pieces, that. that's all. Okay. I apologize. Okay. I'll start over then. Um, for the previous project, when it was just the um, restaurant, we looked at a 6,000 square foot restaurant along with 19,600 square feet of retail space um, in the area that is now the, uh, if you see the mouse here, where the um, Starbucks building is and, and the other building over here that's been previously approved. This supplemental traffic study that was submitted to the town it's dated march 17 2020 um has been submitted and encompasses although previous items on the site have been approved previously um it encompasses everything that you see here and that includes the 6,000 square foot restaurant that's already been constructed a 2,000 square foot fast food restaurant without drive-through window the approximately 2,300 square foot coffee donut shop with drive through window, the 3,000 square foot dispensary, 1,350 square feet of general office space and 10,600 square feet of retail space. So that's how this traffic study differs from the previous one. Um, because we now have included a in coffee donut shop and some office space in this building, we also wanted to look at AM peak hour volumes. So we used the PM and Saturday volumes from the previous study. And then we went out and counted the AM peak period, which is 7 AM to 9 AM out at this intersection, the adjacent intersection of West Broadway at Timpany Boulevard, also Timpany Boulevard at Dyer Street on the east side and Timpany Boulevard, Dyer Street, on the west side and the Tiffany Plaza driveway. So this traffic study looks at the AM, PM, and Saturday midday peak hours. Um, on a site like this, you could expect that if someone was to come in and go and work in the office space, that they may in fact also um, go and stop at the Starbucks possibly. So what we what that means is we have some multi-use trips going on in the site. So although one person may enter and exit and use a couple, um, because they'll use a couple of uses on the site, we have um, less external trips to the site than if each one of these uses were standing alone next to each other on their own driveway. So we have some shared use trips that we can account for on this. So during the AM peak hour, the new trips to the area as a result of this entire development, the, the restaurant that's already open um, and, and the other two buildings that you see there are 201 AM peak hour trips, 147 PM peak hour trips, and 309 Saturday midday trips. Um, once we use the same distribution as we did in the previous study, with 15% east and west on West um, on West Broadway, 40% of the trips to and from the north, and 30% to and from the south. So when you look at that, we have traffic increases on any roadway beyond the site driveways of anywhere from 22 to 125 trips per hour. So that's approximately one to two additional trips every one to two minutes. Um, we did look at capacity and queue analysis at all of the intersections that I mentioned earlier, as well as the site driveways. 
um, as you can imagine, and, and based on the trip generation numbers that I just presented, um, the Saturday midday peak hour is where the greatest impact is seen at that adjacent um, signalized intersection. Um, the AM and PM uh, overall impacts are not that bad. Increases in overall delay to the intersection are less than four seconds. The greatest queue length increases as a, as a result of this development are the northbound Timpany Boulevard left turns because as you can recall at our um, previous approval of this site, this driveway was restricted to a right in, right out on Timpany Boulevard. So all turns that need to come in here now have to come up to the signal, make a left and come in. So, um, so that left turn lane queue gets a little bit longer and all of a sudden this, and also again, because no turns are making a left out onto Timpany Boulevard, they're all required to come out West Broadway and make a left that um, eastbound through left turn lane gets a little bit longer. Um, the good news is during the AM and PM peak hour, the um, and Saturday actually with the improvements, the um, queues can be accommodated in the northbound left turn lane. During the weekday PM peak hour, there is going to be some queuing along West Broadway. Um, average queues can be accommodated in between the signal and the driveway, but the 95th percentile queues, which are expected to occur maybe one to two times during the peak hour, um, will block the driveway. However, we have enough room on site here to accommodate any queuing because of a blocked um, queue due to a red light at the signal. Um, we also noted that the left turn into the site on West Broadway the queue for that is one vehicle, so it's not expected to back up into the traffic signal and um, impact those operations at all. Um, during the Saturday midday peak hour at this intersection, as I said, that's where our greatest impact is seen. We are recommending some signal timing modifications during that peak period just to better balance the intersection. And with that, we can get all um, volume to capacity ratios below one and an overall level of service C. Um, there's negligible impacts from this development at the two Dyer Street intersections and the site driveways. Um, the main lines are all operate well, level of service B with the site driveways operating at level of service C with, a v with um, expected queues of about two, two vehicles. Um, one last thing that I wanted to talk about that's provided in our traffic study and probably relates to the special permit a little bit more is the drive-through queue. Um, as shown on Bill's figures, there's 16 vehicles that can be accommodated in this queue lane here. Um, we provided some information from the Institute of Transportation Engineers, and that shows that um, the average backup queue is about 10 vehicles for a facility like this, and 85th percentile backup queue is 13 vehicles. We also had some um, data from Starbucks, actual Starbucks counts in Londonderry, New Hampshire and Epping, New Hampshire. Um, and although not exactly the Epping, New Hampshire site is pretty correlates to this with traffic volumes and stuff on the adjacent roadways, but at those two sites, a maximum queue was obviously seen during the AM peak hour when everybody likes their coffee, but the Londonderry site had a maximum of 12 vehicles and the Epping site had a maximum of six vehicles. So we wanted to provide that data to show that the queue provided for the proposed site can well be accommodated on site and we don't expect it to overspill um, onto adjacent roadways. Um, but that is, that's my presentation for traffic if there's any questions. Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, Mr. Comments. Chair, if I may, I may have, I have one uh, comment. This is Bill Hannigan from Hannigan Engineering. One of the things that we've seen on many of the drive-through um, coffee shops in general is the initial um, notar um, What's the word I'm looking for? The novelty effect, okay, of a new drive-through or a new coffee shop, especially if something like Starbucks. It's a novelty to everyone go there. Um, and what I'm going to predict it right now that the first two or three months of this facility 
there will be backups that will go out into the into the site drive um, during during the initial phase of the when it first opens. Um, it, we've seen it on every single one um, that both Duncan and um, Starbucks that we've worked on. Um, it, it's because of the fact that there's a novelty about it being there. It's finally available. Everyone's excited. And then after a month or so, it starts to wear off. So I, I wanted to make sure that we said that during the public hearing so that when it does open and there, there is a traffic uh, uh, or a, a, a drive through extending out into the driveway and hopefully they don't start extending up in the street that is if we, we we're anticipating that would happen um and if it gets if it gets bad enough then then amy would have to go out and get a police detail to kind of kind of deal with that traffic and make sure that that um that uh that that for that small period that that would work um so and, and during this this the, during the COVID situation that we're dealing with right now because of the fact that no one can go in these stores um, the drive-through lanes are the, the Starbucks and Lemister is probably about 30 cars long, and at, at six minutes a cup when they do their service, I can't see anyone why they would sit there for an hour and a half for a cup of coffee. I don't know, but that's what we're seeing at the Lemister site right now. Just an anecdotal piece of information. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Comments from staff. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, just a few things. Uh, I think we need to specify. Bill had you know, talked to it. Um, the signage, um, whether there's more than one sign at the site for the drive-through, whether you know the the square feet meets the 40 square foot uh, mark, or is over. Um, and also the height of the sign, it can't be more than seven feet. So if we can get specifications for the signage, um, that would be helpful, I think, for the board. Um, if there are any waivers needed, um, we need that information to be able to uh, review uh, for that purpose. Um, also, there should be some talk about um, screening for the boards, if, if at all possible, the zoning requires it. I know it's kind of a tight site in between the roadway and the drive through lanes and the message boards are are actually feeding out to the roadway they're actually facing the road so and they're fairly tall so i'm, I'm not sure how we'll be able to um screen those um and screen them in a, in a responsible and safe manner uh, we we need to look at that and also lo locating of the trash receptacles um also one thing bill you didn't hit on was the um the lighting of the site the lighting of the drive through area how that's going to be lit and um i think that's um all i have mr chairman thank you can i add a couple things please do chris Yep. So just to add to Trevor's, uh, Bill, if you could speak to if any site lighting has changed from the original proposal. And if so, I think we need the updated lighting plan. Um, and second, something that we floated around in the office was maybe some signage or some paint markings at the entrance southbound on Timpany, just to say to cars not to back up, which would lead you into Timpany. So whether it's signage or hatch markings on the ground, I think that would be helpful there, especially during that AM peak hour. Yeah, I think I think that we would we had talked about putting a sign in this area here that says um, um, no drive through queuing in in drive through or something like that. You know, something like that. Yeah. Effect. Yeah. So I, I think I'll that's perfect. some some verbiage that makes sense. Perfect. That's all from me. All right. Um, as far as the site lighting goes, you can see that there are some lights that we've actually worked around. There's a light that's existing right there. There's a light that's existing right there. We're working around them as best we can. Um, this light in here, we're relocating to that area here. This light here obviously is going to be gone. So we're, we're, we're 
we're debating whether even to save these two or whether we basically just have the lighting company just redo this whole area, which I think is probably going to make more sense. Um, there's one in the parking lot here that's going to get redone. So um, what we'll do is we'll um, send this off to the lighting company for, um, I think this site is okay. I think that we already have the lighting in for those. So those are all set. So we'll have them focus on the lighting for, we'll have update the original lighting plan to reflect this new layout. Um, and I do also want to take a look at the, any lighting along the street relative to existing coal lighting that may contribute to that so they can consider that so we don't overlight the area as well. Great, thank you. Anything further from staff? Okay, uh, Trevor, as far as the, uh, the IM, thing we talked about um should they i am me or you um either i mean yeah i might as well go to me and then or no go to probably, probably be best if they i am me and i can call on yeah them, correct yeah so, or, so or both. okay we're going to enter into the public commentary portion uh we'll be asking for comments in favor and comments in opposition. Now, here's how we're going to work it so we don't have chaos. If you're in GoToMeeting, use your chat feature, which is that thing that looks like a cartoon talk bubble up on the right hand side. And I am me, Mark Schaffron, S C H A F R O N, with your name and your street address, and I'll call on you one at a time. Okay? This is for anyone that wishes to be heard in favor of this proposal. I'll be standing by waiting for your comments for a few minutes. All right, seeing none, for the folks that are in this meeting who are exclusively on the telephone and wish to be heard in favor of this proposal, again, this is just folks that are on the phone exclusively and not in the meeting, the uh, electronic meeting, uh, go ahead and state your name, try not to talk all over each other if you can. Uh, your name and your street address, and I'll recognize you. This, again, is for people in favor of this proposal. Hey, Mark. It's uh, Jim Boone, Councillor Jim Boone, 50 Ash Street, Gardner. Yes, Mr. Boone. Floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I certainly have seen a lot of good things come out of um, the previous project on the site from the 99. And as a as a city councilor, we're looking to make sure that the city continues to prosper and continues to attract residents from outside. So, um, I, I, again, I, I think the planning board has done a great job. I think the developers have done a great job. So I'm in favor of it. I, I just had one question. Um, we addressed uh, lighting going into West Broadway from the left-hand side, but what about the right-hand side? where the car is sitting on the corner, isn't the lights gonna shine right into the oncoming traffic? And, and number two, is there shrubbery? And I don't know if that's appropriate to ask at this time. Mr. Chair, do you want me to answer that? Yes, I'm sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself. Uh, Council Boone, those are indeed appropriate questions and could you address them, Mr. Hannigan? Sure. Um, so, I, uh, Councilor Boone, I believe you're talking about this area in here as they're coming around the corner? Yes. Okay. So, this area here is about four feet below the grade of the roadway. So, there actually is an embankment that would be built in here. That would be landscaped anyways, uh, and, and, and adding shrubs to that would be more for the purpose of stabilization versus a screening. Um, so, the, but the lighting in this area, if you look at a light height of around three feet, uh, which is probably high, um, that would actually not 
should not interfere with the oncoming traffic coming southbound on, on Timpani. But I do think that that would make sense to add some shrubbery in this area here. I think that's part of what um, Trevor is asking about, probably re regarding this whole stretch in this area um, to provide some sort of a, of a landscape screen um, that would not, you know, from our perspective, we don't want it to block the building, but to block the lights and block some of the sound from the speaker units, et cetera. I think that that would be appropriate. I do note that across the street in this area here um, is other uh, non-residential uses. Um, so the, the noise probably is less of an issue than the lights. I think the lights shining into the traffic is probably a, a bigger issue myself. That's just me personally. I hope that addresses your question. Uh, yes, you did. Thank you, Mr. Hannigan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Is there anyone else here wishing to be heard in favor of this proposal? Is there anyone else here wishing to be heard in favor of this proposal? Hearing and seeing none. Same drill. Uh, if you want to be heard in opposition to this proposal and you're in go to meeting, I am me using your chat feature. And then we'll get to the folks that are exclusively on the telephone. Anyone here wishing to be heard in opposition to this proposal? And on the telephone? Anyone here wishing to be heard in opposition of this proposal? Anybody here wishing to be heard in opposition to this proposal? Hearing none. Due to the unusual circumstances of this evening's meeting and some of the technical difficulties uh, inherent in these digital communications, I'm going to continue this hearing into our May meeting to give the uh, public the full opportunity to listen to the recording, which I, the go to meeting recording, which I believe will be on our website, Trevor. Is that what we decided? Yes. And also, uh, I misinformed you earlier, ladies and gentlemen, we weren't, aren't being simulcast tonight on WGET. However, the recording of uh, this broadcast will be available later on the public access. Uh, in the interim, members of the public that have further questions about this are welcome to call the planning director's office at 978-630-4014. Again, that's 978-630-4014 or email at tbeauregard, T-B-E-A-U-R-E-G-A-R-D, at gardner-ma.gov. And with that said, uh, we'll continue this into May, and we'll transition into the regular planning board meeting. Uh, presenters, thank you very much, and good evening. Uh, just one question, Mr. Chair. Do you have a date for May? That would be it's scheduled for the 12th. Uh, Trevor, we had some discussion about that, which escapes me right now. Yeah, so there, um, there's a special uh, city election to primary for the mayor's race on that date, on the 12th. So we're going to probably move it. We haven't decided yet. The planning board hasn't discussed it and decided. It will be decided at the end of the uh, regular scheduled meeting tonight. And I'm, I'm going to recommend we do it on May 13th, but that's up to the board. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, this is a regular monthly meeting of the City of Gardner Planning thank Board. You. You're quite welcome. Uh, first item in business is a vote to approve the regular meeting minutes from our February meeting, there being no meeting in March. I make a motion. Mr. Chairman, we approve the minutes. Motion has been made. Bob Schwartz, second. Thank you. Motion is made and seconded to approve the regular meeting minutes from February. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those, those opposed? Motion passed. New business 2.1. And we're carrying that over into May, unless you have any further comments for us, Mr. Bogard. 
No, I would just if the board uh, would vote to continue to the May meeting, that would be, I think, a good, a good thing. I make a motion to continue to the main, the May meeting. Second. Bob. Okay, motion made and seconded to carry forth the uh, tonight's public hearing to our May meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. 2.2, .2, Timpany Crossroads, uh, special permit, same thing. 2.3. Yeah, we should probably uh, have a motion on that. I'm sorry. Motion made. Carry that also. Uh, that item of business also into May, which is a uh, special permit. I make a motion to carry it forward to May. Thank you, Mr. Bettis. Do I have second. a second? Second, second. From Mr. Schwartz. Gotcha. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passed. 2.3. 525 Parker Street as a development overlay district one. Justin or Patrick, which one of you wants to be the presenter? <laughs> He's looking at me. That's Justin, so. okay. Give me one second, please. Um, back to me first. <laughs> Justin, you are now a presenter. Okay. Make sure. Um, can everyone see what is on the screen right now? It's just a uh, cover letter. Identify yes. yourself for the record, please, sir. Yes. So my name is Justin Claire McCarty Engineering. And tonight I'm just the uh, presenter and moving the material as needed. Very good. Thank you. So, so I can't see you guys. So you just have to tell me that uh, what's up on the screen right now, which is a PDF you guys can see. A PDF with your letterhead. Perfect, thank you. Patrick, are you Hello. able to speak? Yeah, can you hear me tonight? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Have okay, your, good uh, evening. Your, your name and your uh, company for the record, please, and then I'll be quiet. Yes, sir. So, uh, good evening. My name is Patrick McCarty. I'm the order of McCarty Engineering. Uh, Justin McClare is with me tonight, as is Brian Marchetti, a project engineer, and Matt Olson, who's the applicant. Before we dive into the details of the project, I just wanted to thank um, Trevor and the members of the board for having this unorthodox meeting. I know it's not easy for any of us and we appreciate it. And also we wanted to wish everybody's family um, good health and well-being in these difficult times. So that being said, I'll get into the discussion of the project. Uh, as was mentioned, this is at 525 Parker Street, which is a seven and a half acre parcel located in the industrial one zoning district. It's bounded to the left by the B&M Railroad and Parker Pond to the west. There's residential properties to the north and east and Parker Street to the south with residences on the opposite side of Parker Street. In 2006, a development overlay district was established for the site. And in May of seven, Justin, stop shuffling papers, please. It's not me. Okay. All right. In uh, May of 2007, the board uh, voted to approve a development that consisted of 54 units in 16 three and four unit buildings. 
the project was never constructed and the sites sat vacant um, since that time. As I'm sure all of you know, the site was formerly Gem Industries, a furniture manufacturer, and there was a large mill on the site that was demolished in 2006. So for about the last uh, 14 years, it's been left undeveloped and uh, partially vegetated. So on behalf of Mr. Olson, we've prepared plans for uh, three multifamily buildings, which you can see here are the yellow rectangles on the plan. Um, one on the eastern side, one on the western side, and then one up in the north um, that's slightly at an angle with the backside of it facing Parker Pond. Each building is uh, three stories and contains 41 units. The development envelope, so the area of the site that we're proposing to use for this project is the same envelope that was um, used in the previously approved project. The main difference between the two is the approved project showed a emergency access driveway through the wetland and out to Water Street. We have a, a double barrel proposed entrance uh, out to Parker Street, and so we didn't see the need for that disturbance to the wetland and introduction of traffic onto that small uh, low volume street of Water Street to the north. So this is a copy of the site plan that was uh, submitted. Larry, our landscape architect, just color rendered it to uh, make it more visible of what we're proposing. We've transmitted it electronically to Trevor and we'll also send him hard copies of this rendered plan so it becomes part of the public record. What we're asking the board is that you make a, um, a recommendation. Well, I'm sorry, what we're seeking is to extend the development overlay district that was granted in 2006 for the previously approved project to extend that uh, development overlay for this new proposed project. And our understanding is that the first step in the process is a recommendation from the planning board to the city council um, on that request. And then the city council would then take it up in a joint meeting with uh, your your board, the planning board and city council to discuss the more engineering details, traffic, grading, landscaping, all that stuff that comes when we get into the more elaborate submission. Am I summarizing that correctly, Trevor? Yeah, I mean, the planning board at this point is, you've submitted your amendment request to the city council and my mic on yes you are Trevor. Yes. You're, you're on thanks um and the city council is now asking the planning board for the recommendation so yes. yeah. basically if i can just to give a brief background that the original de um, development overlay district was approved for i believe a 54 unit three and four unit um, condo development um, back in 2006, 2007 timeframe, which was never built. And so this um, potential, this developer, um, Mr. Olson has now come forward and requesting a amendment to that overlay to allow for um, three multi-unit uh, buildings um, for a total of about, I think, 121 rental units on the property, as opposed to the uh, 54 uh, residential uh, condo units. That's correct. So, you're done presenting? Yes, uh, unless you want me to get into the, the more details of the plan or does that come later when if we get to site plan approval we can zoom in and give you a little bit more explanation of the plan itself or i think it's more of the the density yeah um my first question is setbacks um this looks like a pretty big expansion um what are we talking for setbacks here from the street mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, Justin, can you zoom in on that section of the plan? Yep. Board members, feel free to chime in. 
So this is a colored version that was submitted to you. I have a hard copy here with me at home. So it, the hard copy stamp that was submitted has a zoning summary table on it. And the requirements for this district is a minimum lot area of 5,000 square feet. We have like 706,000 square feet, so we can form there. Lot coverage uh, maximum of 85%, we're at 20.7%. Frontage, there's none required in the industrial one. We have 390.5. A minimum side yard of 10 feet. We're proposing 21 feet. Which, Justin, can you point to the uh, easterly property line in the building? Yep. So that green area there is 21 feet. Um, front yard, there's no required setback. We're at 10. And if you look, um, Within the tan or beige colored rectangle, you can see the footprint of the former mill building in like a gray with a patch around it. And so the proposed buildings are no closer to Parker Street than the original furniture factory building was, which is a, a 10 foot front yard setback. Rear yard 20 feet required and we have about 591 proposed. Uh, max height of 60 feet. Can you, saw, can you zoom? Can you please zoom back out on this, please? Yep. Thank you. There you go. So, um, I'm guessing that rear yard dimension is probably wrong in the zoning table, Justin. From the north west corner of the back building to the rear property line which is this way this lot um actually has parker pond within the lot lines so the lot lines come out this way and then oh, go so off the page oh, okay. so it's more back across the pond i consider this more the side yard setback for this building okay um maximum height in the district is 60 feet these buildings are 52 and number of stories in the district is five and we're proposing three so the the stamp plan that was submitted with our application not the color graphic here has that zoning summary table on the right hand side uh, patrick do you want me to pull it up so they can see it sure so this is just the plan that patrick is referencing as you can see off to the right this is what he was just talking about. So you guys can look at this for your use. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can I just make a quick comment? Please do. Um, so I understand that the development overlay district does not have a uh, front yard setback for the development overlay district one. Um, this zoning was really developed more for your downtown development, which we've seen over the past, you know, 15, 20 years. This just happened to be outside of downtown. It's a little different. It's in a little different setting from your downtown. So, what I what I've brought to the developers' attention or to the engineers' attention in the past is, I think it really would add a lot to the project aesthetically. Um, fitting into this area a little better um, because you do have a predominantly you know it's single family one or two family homes maybe some three families in there um but they're you know somewhat set back from the roadway they're not right on the roadway um they're not you know, these buildings are you know three stories high um and you know fairly large compared to your the typical house that you find in that area. So uh, my recommendation was to move the buildings back off the roadway somewhat um, to be more in, in consistent with the underlying zoning, not the development overlay uh, zone. And that would be, I think it's 30 feet in that area, in that zone. I mean, is it single family residential or general residential Do you? Either one of you recall? This site is sorry. 
No, I don't. I, I can zoom in. So now, Trevor, are you asking about the site itself or the um, the Water Street, the Branch Street, that surrounding area? Yeah, the site itself is industrial. The, yes. I'm talking about Water Street, um, um, Parker Street, and yeah, all that that neighborhood. That I uh, can't recall off the top of my head which residential it was uh, zoned. I, I believe the 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 um, industrial property that was there was a single story. I'm pretty sure. Um, so it wasn't as large height wise as the, as the buildings are being proposed in the site now. So it is going to be a significant change to that area and um, impactful. Yeah, I was only I was only able to see the footprint of the bu former building on Google Earth's historical. You can see it getting demolished around 2005, 2006. But I, you know, I don't know what the height of that structure was. Some of the members of the board, I'm sure, would recall. I do not, um, Trevor. Uh, DRC had a chance to examine this. Have, have um, you uh, comment from DRC review? No, we did not have a DRC review. Um, I did share. We did have a meeting with the developers. Um, I can't recall if it, was, if it was just me and the building commissioner. And conservation. Conservation. I did share it with a couple other the other members, but we didn't have a formal development review yet. I just wanted to get some initial feedback on the plans just to, you know, assist the planning board in in this process. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about, open, open, how about open space? Uh, one second, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Trevor, should we uh, unmute Mr. Olson, the applicant, in case he wants to join in the discussion? He can unmute himself if he wants. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. So the open uh, space. Yes. If you'd count, you mean it, 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 whether you take the pond into consideration or not. So if um, if you if you take the usable area of the site, we have a lot coverage of about forty four percent. So about six percent open space. 20%, I'm sorry. How much open space? I'm sorry, it was a little digital burble there. So if you take the pond out of it and just look at the usable area of the site, that it's about 44% lot cover, 56% open space. If you take the pond, which is on on this subject property, then the, the open space goes up to like 80%, but Obviously, you're counting the pond in that instance. So the pond is not going to be considered open space. Um, right, which is why we have a separate calculation there under the zoning table. So if you read the definition of open space in the in the uh, zoning code, mm -hmm. it parts of a lot. The, Developed for pleasant appearance in trees, shrubs, ground cover, and grass, including other landscape elements such as natural features of the site, walks and terraces, such shall not include rooftops, areas of the lot, access drives, or other high areas, except walks and above. So that's what we're going to be looking at for open space on the right. site. So if you do it that way, it's the 56%. I'm sorry? It's 56% doing it that way. If you see the, the note, Justin, please zoom in on the paragraph below the table. We have not covered within the usable area at 44%. So the corresponding, the open space would be 56%.
I'm not seeing how you have 50% open space on this site. You have quite a bit of area be behind the building uh, A, building C, outside of the wetlands, north of building A, behind building B, internal to the parking lot where we have the landscape features, in between the sidewalk and the building. So the lot coverage is the building and paving within that development area. Is there any uh, of um, providing the outdoor common area for the residents at the site, recreational area? Um, even internal, uh, indoor. Rec well, there's, yeah, there's a large area behind building uh, C in between the building and the edge of the pond. There's a large green space area behind both those buildings. Is that outside the resource areas? It's within the buffer zone, which is fine for <laughs> passive creation, but it's, it's not counting the uh, resource area itself. Do you know how large of an area it is? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. But there has been some thought put into that. Mm -hmm. uh, is there secondary access for uh, emergency? Just looking at. Uh, Kind of an eye chart here on my end, one way in, one way out. Well, actually, it's um, a 24 foot driveway on either side of that center island. So, that was one thing that we discussed with Mr. Beauregard is right now we're going in and out on each of those main drive aisles. Um, we could Restrict that to one way in and one way out, but keep the width. So in the event of an emergency, you have that ability to get by. Um, and with just with some striping and signage and directional arrows, make that one way loop. If there's a concern about the two curb cuts being too close together. We felt that that was a better option than going through the wetland and out to Water Street, which is obviously a narrow volume residential street and you'd have to plow right through that isolated vegetated wetland to get there. Uh, let's see, you said uh, 121 units, sir? 123. 123, thank you. Um, have you considered traffic impact, uh, traffic study? We have not prepared a traffic study yet. Thank you. Chairman, if I may. Go ahead. So I did, you know, I did speak with the fire chief on this and he, he was um, really adamant about having that. It's, um, I mean, even if it's just for uh, public safety vehicles, and if it's just a, not necessarily a 28-foot roadway, but a, a narrower, even a, a graveled roadway with a fet with a. Um, I'm you know, sorry, Trevor. You're getting a lot of background noise. Yeah, I know. If you're not presenting or speaking, please mute your microphone. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, can you hear me? Yes. So the uh, the fire chief did um, mention he would like to see a secondary access for his vehicles. And again, he just he noted that you know it doesn't have to be the twenty foot wide, twenty eight foot wide roadway. It doesn't have to be paved as long as it's a it's a hard graveled surface. 
um, you know, we could put a, uh, a gate there. I think that's something that you know, should be considered. Because um, if there is an incident at the entrance and blocking the entrance on Parker Street, and there's something going on in the back of the site, there's really no access back there. Um, and you have a lot of units in the back of that site. So. Um, and then also um, on the front, on the exit, the two entrances in the front, um, I got some feedback from the DPW uh, director, and he's the one that uh, mentioned that he um, would prefer seeing for, you know, for safety purposes, uh, just one entrance in and out of the site. It's just going to add a lot of confusion. It's going to be a lot in this uh, more instances for for accidents when you have two entrances side by side like that um i do think they have to be if you have two entrances like two entrances like that they have to be at least a, a 200 250 feet away from each other so you need to seek relief on that anyways yeah zoning requires a specific distance and it may be 200 feet between driveway cuts without a variance request so just something to, something to think about. Sorry, somehow I got muted. Um, just curiosity more, does that apply if it was a one way in and one way out, then that 200 feet wouldn't apply? If we took the right hand driveway and made it in and the left hand driveway made it out? Yeah, I believe if you're gonna be directional and loop, it would be okay. 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 Questions from the board? Gentlemen. Anything further from uh, staff? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Um, I remember when that plant was there and uh, there was actually a paved banking that you could park cars on, and it was sort of a, in my mind, a death-defying defeat to drive in and drive out because the edge of the banking was right on the edge of Parker Street. Uh, Steve, you probably remember that. Yes, very much um, so. So I'm, I'm looking at the plan, and I'm thinking, that one, the edges of the, the ends of the buildings are really too close, and that may not have an effect relative to traffic, but the entrance to the driveway, uh, or driveways in this case, uh, it is really, I think you need more uh, travel lane to, uh, to have access in, into that facility. Um, so I have a concern about that. And then to support you, uh, Trevor, you know, I know the chief quite well, and that was gonna be one of my comments again. We're gonna need another secondary exit access in the event of emergency. Uh, that's one of his pet peeves. I'm quite familiar with that. So that those, those really have to be addressed. <clears throat> Um, yeah, we're, we're uh, just for the you know for our standpoint, we have no opposition to it. We just were looking at um, you know having to go through that wetland to get to Water Street. Obviously, we can. It was permitted in the past, so we, we're not opposed to adding an emergency vehicle only access to Water Street. And uh, that middle in the driveway, that middle fencing or green area. Uh, if 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 you're gonna go to um, a one way in, one way out, uh, wouldn't we eliminate that barrier in the middle? I I don't see a need of it, although it does look nice, but. Yeah, we're, I think actually we would probably get a little bit bigger because right now we have 24 foot drive aisles 
if we went to one way and not saying that we are going to one way, obviously we need to discuss this and see what it has yeah, for impacts on the design. But if we went to one way, we could go to, you know, maybe a 20 foot wide. Um, so that would gain four feet from each drive aisle, which would be eight feet total that we could add to that central green space um, and create almost like a boulevard effect that you would see where you'd have the, the road going in with landscaping separating you from the road going out. So it would add some green space, add some more open space. Um, so it's definitely something to consider. And, you know, potentially we would break it um, right at the end of the first building so that you wouldn't have to go all the way to the back of the site to loop back around. There would be a break somewhere in between. Yeah. yeah relative to the height of the original factory building, uh, actually it was one story. It was. And although we refer to it as Gem Industries, the original owner of that building was a Hearn Manufacturing and they made furniture. Yeah, that's how far that goes back. Of course, I'm dating myself, but <laughs> but that's how far that goes back. Okay, thank you for that. The reason why um, I know that is that the son of the owner I went to school with, so I, I do know and I do recall what that factory was like. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, how about a lighting plan? We have a full set of site plans put together, grading, drainage, utilities, landscaping. But for this um, part of the process, we just submitted the layout plan with a number of units until we have the, hopefully, a blessing on moving forward on the development overlay. And then we would submit the full set of plans to both planning board and conservation to start that process. And to Patrick's point, um, Mr. Chairman, more of a conceptual uh, stage of the process. However, um, planning board is going to be recommending um, against the city council. So I think what you see, even even as it's conceptual, should be it. as consistent as possible to what the final product's going to be. Mm -hmm. Um. Agreed, and uh, I would, uh, I personally would want to see uh, plans with a revised entryway and uh, with the secondary entrance included at a minimum. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Steve, go on here. Mr. Chairman, I echo. Uh, Bob, as well as uh, Trevor, as far as the closeness to Parker Street, I know that when O'Hearns and uh, Gem Industries was there, it was very close to the road. It was probably one car length, pretty much, as far as parking to be able to go through the front entrance. And the yes. railroad bridge, the railroad bridge being where it is, and as narrow yes. as it is, would become a very difficult. Uh, uh, situation as far yes. as putting a building there that close up. So I I echo the same thought as far as um, if we could get the buildings back um, from the roadway it would be better. Uh, as far as the secondary means of egress, I agree. And the only thing I'd add to that, oh, Trevor, is I wouldn't go with gravel. I would probably go with a paved just to say that uh, come winter time, they'd have to plow it to maintain it to make sure it's it is open, it's gonna be a secondary. So it would have to be plowed, not necessarily 28 feet, but like you said, something that could be sustained and be plowed at the time. Yeah. That's all I, I have, I, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Uh, I, I agree with that. And I think I would defer to the fire chief on that one. I mean, I, I think the minimal impact that we could propose on that would be the best as far as conservation is concerned. So we'd have to balance the fire chief's needs versus conservation's concerns relative to going through the wetland. So I appreciate that and we'd have to work that out between the, the parties of interest. I, I think that what needs to happen at this point is uh, you're welcome to come back again. I don't think this is quite ready for uh, our recommendation yet. Um, I would like to see you work with the uh, planning director 
and the various other city bodies to address these concerns, and uh, then we can take a look again. Does the board concur Mr. with Chairman. that view? Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yes, please. Uh, just a quick note on, I, I know I talked to Patrick and Justin on this too, and I'm sure they talked to Mr. Olson, but um, this, with, for a zoning amendment, there is a, there's a time frame we need to meet under the Zoning Act in order for it to be enacted. Um, so, you know, I, I believe um, Mr. Olson has a PNS on the, on the property, so he has a form of ownership to the property, so he's allowed to um, ask for a zoning amendment um, or rezone of the property. And once the council receives that request, they need they have 14 days to get it to the planning board. They got to us out within that 14 day period. Um, we didn't meet in March, and it was actually March 5th when I received it. Our meeting would have been the following Tuesday. I wouldn't have had time to review it and put it on the agenda, anyways. But we didn't have a meeting that month. Um, our May, our April meeting was was rescheduled to tonight. Um, and so we're just reviewing it now. Um, and we need to still make, the planning board needs to make that recommendation back to the city council. Both boards need to have a joint public hearing or a public hearing. Typically we have a joint public hearing. Um, within 65 days after the planning board receives the plan from the city council, that would bring us to May 9th. There's no way we would meet that deadline anyways. Um, what I think is probably most appropriate um, because if we don't meet that deadline, nothing's going to happen. The zoning amendment can't be approved unless it's a public hearing. So um, I talked to the engineers and I'm sure, again, I think they probably had a discussion with Mr. Olson is to uh, this and resubmit. I mean, just it's, it's basically a form of a letter um, and when they have a, um, a rev revised plan in place, and I think we'll be able to meet that timeline once that's done, uh, if we have a workable plan. That's um, what my recommendation would be. I'm not sure how the proponents feel about that and if they have any comments they'd like to offer. Well, yeah, I don't think that really there is any comments from us, Trevor. It's just it's an unfortunate fact of the circumstances that we're all living in. You know, as you said, there's certain time frames that a zoning amendment has to be acted upon. And due to everything going on in the world today, there, it's just impossible for either side of this to make that deadline. Um, and so I, I guess that we would... Um, withdraw without prejudice with the letter, make some revisions to the plan and then resubmit to start the clock over again um, to give us time both on the board side to review it and our side to make changes to appease everyone's concerns and, and keep the project moving forward. Just if I could, my takeaways are to look at the access in the proposed driveways to see what we can do to move the buildings further back from Parker Street, even though you know we, we tried to tried to work with what was there for the previous footprint and what was there, you know, and we are constrained on all sides between the pond and the wetlands, and so we're trying to work within that. So we'll see what we can do on moving the buildings back. We'll add a secondary access to Water Street. Um, and not to not to flag concerns, but just to put everybody every card on the table is I didn't hear a lot or any pushback, as a matter of fact, on the number of units or the size of the buildings, I think. Um, what I don't want to do is go back and make changes and then come back and, and have another. Obviously, there'll be more comments, but I don't want it to result in a full redesign. So I didn't hear a lot of comments back on the size of the building or look of the building or number of units. I think it's more the the public safety type of concerns, the access both at Parker Street and out to Water Street and the setback from Parker Street. Is that a, a fair summary? I'm also interested in traffic impact. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. 
I would like to voice my concerns. Please do. The residents, the residents on the pond and around the pond have been fighting for years to get that pond cleaned up. I don't know how much pollution is going to be added to the pond from this development, from runoff from the parking lots and so on. So the, the um, I guess the short answer to that is that the stormwater system will be designed or has been designed to meet all the Massachusetts stormwater management standards and that would be submitted uh, drainage calculations and reports submitted with the detailed set of plans to both planning and conservation for their review uh, at that time for you know DPW and engineering's review. Thank you. We, we certainly wouldn't, on our side, we certainly wouldn't want to add any impact to the pond. Just, Mr. Chairman, if I may, one more comment. Please. Just to add to your list, I really, I, I want to work with you on the, the open space, the outdoor common area and all that. I still, not, I'm not seeing the 56% open space on this plan that I'm looking at. I'm not outside the buffer area. So I think we need to really sit down and look at that. And I mean, having many people in one area, one smaller area, um, I really think there needs to be some outdoor facilities. I mean, you're gonna have children there, there's no doubt about it. And you're gonna have right. families and, you know, it's good. there's gonna be some amenities on site for that amount of people. I mean, it's just, it's, quality of life issue you know and i think we really need to look at that uh, yep. whether it's indoor outdoor both or outdoor only or um that's something i just want to i want to stress that's it's important okay um yeah I, I don't have your zoning code right in front of me to review that so i think that's just a discussion that you and i can have uh offline Mr. Chairman, I have a question, couple of questions. Go ahead, please. Uh, the, these rental units, are they going to be rented at market prices? Yeah, Matt, market are you, uh, you unmuted, Matt? Yes, yes, I'm unmuted. So can you respond to that? They're all market rate rentals. They're correct? all market rate, that's correct, yep. Okay, are there going to be any Section 8 uh, Apartments designated for Section Eight housing? Um, no, there, there, there wasn't. Uh, I wasn't planning on that. No. Okay, they're all market rate. Yep. One hundred and twenty-three. Are they going to be oriented to certain age groups of people? Um, no, that that was not the plan. No. Okay, so it's really open to anybody. Anybody yeah, yeah, can afford the apartment. Down. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. We should know, Justin, if you could zoom in on the bottom right <clears throat> corner too so we can show the bedroom count. We forgot to go over that in our presentation. So we have 92 bedroom units and 33 one bedroom units. We have families. Okay. Anything further from the board or staff? Okay, so yeah, I've got a, I've, I have a comment. Yep. Um, I know in some of the Ward 3 uh, log conversation that's been going on, really in opposition to this project. Uh, they've made mention of an impact to the city uh, relative to the school department. I mean, with a number of bedrooms, I and I speak as a member of the school committee, I, I don't think that would be a major impact to the school district uh, relative to children. Uh, we currently have room 
Uh, so I don't see that that's an imposition. I'm not speaking on behalf of the school department. I'm, I'm only giving my personal two cents and what I know about the school population. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what I would recommend is uh, that you do the uh, withdrawal, the letter, so we can reset the clock, work with the appropriate uh, city personnel to address these concerns, and uh, we will see you again. Sound good? Yes, sir. Matt, any, uh, anything else before we go? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Wondering if uh, Mr. McCarthy, on uh, his next uh, print, he can bring us a better design of the, the building itself. Uh, I, I'm just looking at three square buildings in the plot down here. Let's oh, like yeah. see what kind of building they're proposing to build. Yeah, we actually, um, we have some preliminary um, renderings that were prepared. Justin, do you have those? So there's kind of a, an aerial looking down at the site. Mm -hmm. Shows a nice pristine blue water marker pond, uh, which we know is more of a wetland than a pond. And then here's a look standing at the driveway at Parker Street, looking in at the site. Uh, oh no, I'm standing in the back looking forward. Standing at the back of the site, looking out towards Parker Street. Is that generic or is that your actual uh, architectural design? Yeah, so Mackenzie Engineering, also of Lemonster, is doing the architectural and structural design of the buildings themselves. And then uh, Matt hired a company that specializes in taking those architectural plans and creating realistic renderings based off the architectural design. You can see there are three stories. They've mixed in some gable ends. They've got some balconies. They've mixed in different type of siding textures with shapes on the bottom, conventional lap siding for the second and third floors, and then takes again up in the to give it some detail. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there's nothing further. Anything further from the board or staff? Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll see you All again. Right, thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. 2.4, uh, Planning Board member for the DRC, which I would love to do but cannot because of my working hours. We need a volunteer. Uh, Trevor, I'll raise my hand. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, so uh, basically we're uh, – Laura Casker was the member of the De Development Review Committee. We meet on an as-needed basis, um, typically during the day. Um, morning meetings more often than not, uh, typically on Thursdays, but depending on the availability and what my schedule looks like. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's part of the preliminary review. <laughs> Look at the conceptual plans and then offer feedback to the um, you know, potential developers or engineers uh, that are looking to develop. And that's. I raised my hand again. <laughs> so did Steve. So did Steve. Yeah. I'd be interested in it. Hmm. I don't know okay, why guys. I should keep volunteering, but I have a habit of doing that. You guys, you guys want to do rock, paper, scissors? Not raising your hand. Virtual arm wrestling? <laughs> yeah. I'd lose. <laughs> Flip a coin. Doesn't matter. You want it, Robert? You can have it. Okay, Steve. Thank you. If I get bored, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, that's a deal. Do we need to uh, motion and vote on this? I've drawn yes. a blank here, protocol. Make a motion oh, yes. we uh, put Rob uh, 
Swatson as the uh, chair, as our representative of the DRC committee. Second. Seconded by Mr. Cormier. Any discussion? Those in favor? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right, motion passed. Uh, next item of business is fee schedule amendment. Trevor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, so I we recently updated the fee schedule. Um, in doing so, I ran into a uh, one issue. I think it was more, more recent um, one of the projects that was in front of us tonight. Um, for drivers, I had a flat fee of 750 for the application fee. However, if it's that makes sense if it's if it's done as part of an, another project, but if it's not done as part of another project, we need to review it. It has to go through the whole development review process. Um, and it takes a lot of staff time, a lot of department head time, not only me, other department heads. And so um, I made a, I recommend making an edit halfway down the front, the first page on the drive through. Originally, it just said 750, uh, but now I, I recommend changing it to 750 if part of a site plan review application um, or 750 plus 25 cents per square foot of gross floor area attributed to the drive through. Um, if it's part of a site plan review application, they're already going to pay that 25 cents per square foot down to um, site plan review. So I don't want to, we can't double charge them but if they're just coming in for the for the drive through then they need to be charged a fee for all the review time so um, that's what I'm recommending that change and I'm recommending another change on page two halfway down page two under the chart uh, planning board amendments um, we have never had any section for this or any fee for um, a modification so um, if somebody does come in with a substantial modification, it's a lot of staff time again, and you know we start the process over again, and uh, it's a lot of review time and a lot of meeting time. So I really feel there should be some type of uh, fee associated with with a um, a modification, a major modification to a special permit site plan review or a subdivision plan, um, and then I. So the wording is it shall be consistent with fees associated with the definitive plan submittal. Um, however, depending on the size and scope of the of the actual uh, modification, um, I'm recommending that or um, give the director um, charge of you know being able to modify the the fee depending on the nature and degree of the, of the modification itself. It's reasonable. So if if the board has any questions for me, I'm more than happy to address them. Um, would need a, a, a board vote tonight to amend the fee schedule. I don't have any uh, questions or comments. Um, I'm happy to entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we go along with the new fee schedule as presented tonight by Trevor. Second. Uh, second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. Next meeting. Now, ordinarily we'd be up on the uh, the 12th, but we've also got, uh, that's election night. Uh, how do you gents? Feel about the 13th, which is Wednesday at 7 p.m. That's fine with me. That's fine. I'd yep. rather do it the week it's after. On I'm sorry, Bob. I couldn't hear you. I'd rather do it the week after on a Tuesday. Which would be in my calendar's out of sight. That would be the 19th. Thanks. So 19th, okay. It's fine with me. 
Is that all right with you, Trevor? That works for me. Yeah, that's fine. No, I, I've got a problem on the 19th with the school department. That's why 13th is fine. I've got a major budget hearing, a public public meeting on our FY21 budget. Okay, so we'd be uh, we'd be one member down, but we'd still have a quorum. Okay. But we're also going to have the. I just keep in mind we're going to have the special permit. Um, if you if if you know we have all the information in front of us and the board wants to vote that night, um, I really think it's important to have all five members there to take the vote. Mr. So, Chairman, can we back it up to that instead of Wednesday, Thursday? Does that work for you, Trevor, or everyone else? I'm sorry, what state is that, Steve? The 14th? Yeah, it would be the 14th. We're still within that week. Would that work for everybody? Chris? It does work for me. Does yes, it work I'm open. Bob? It's okay with me. Paul? Bob, Bob what, what is that okay with you? Yeah. That's fine. Oh, uh, up it does. Yes. Would you rather have the 13th? Yes. It's okay with me. You broke up. The 14th. Okay, right now we're at May 14th, which is uh, Thursday. That's okay with me. Sounds good. Okay, we're all on board. Okay, next meeting will be uh, Thursday, May 14th at 7 p.m. Mr. B if there's nothing further, Mr. Batez, you're on. <laughs> and he broke up. Well, come closer to your microphone. You got to come closer so we can hear it. Can we adjourn? <laughs> Love it. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion Aye. carries. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, yeah. Mr. The Chairman, before session. you leave, uh, yes. I apologize. I had to stand up in the middle of the meeting. I ended up with a Charlie horse. So oh, I didn't even notice. Everybody. I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> like a long flight. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you everybody for your patience too with this uh, first trial run for the planning board meeting. Yeah, it went well. Fine, so. Yeah, so. yeah. All things I considered, we did all right. I, th I, I so. thought so too. Yes, I agree. So, yeah. A couple of technology glitches, but we got through. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night. Good night, good night right, friends. Take care. Stay safe. And we will see you in a month or so. Okay. Good night. Good night. Nighty night.